Hi, I'm Sam Say, President and CEO of Purpose Investments. I'm joined today with uh, our partner, Craig Bassinger, who is Lead Portfolio Manager for the Purpose Behavioral Opportunities Fund. This is one of the really unique uh, investment strategy funds here in Canada, focused on behavioral finance and behavioral economic opportunities that sort of present themselves in, in the marketplace. Um, Craig, I want to uh, ask you, first off, tell us a little bit about this strategy, because it's such a unique, it's I think the only behavioral opportunities fund here in Canada. Tell us a little bit about how you run the fund and, and, and how you sort of built this. Yeah, and, and thanks for having me. We uh, we launched this just back in January, so it's still a relatively new fund. But it it's our belief that a lot of the inefficiencies in the market, mispriced assets, are actually caused by individuals' emotions and behavioral mistakes. And what we've done is we've created a fund that uses a number of different strategies that specifically target behavioral biases and essentially are trying to make money off other investors' mistakes in the market. So when you look at behavioral economics and, and a lot of the sort of changes that have happened over the last couple of years where you know the market has started to recognize that, that humans are emotional, we make bad decisions at times, there's more of a, of a, a recognition of the research around this type of investment uh, thinking or, or the, the, the market's behaviors. And we've seen, you know, kind of the, the most recently, Richard Thaler won the Nobel Prize uh, for uh, behavioral uh, finance uh, specifically. And, and you know, when you look at the sort of the de development of a strategy around this, how do we know that you can actually make money with these or exploiting some of these um, known biases the market is driven to take advantage of because you know, of, of investor behavior? Yeah, it, I mean, it's not a new discipline. There's no question. It's a rising in popularity, but understanding people's emotions isn't new. I mean, Warren Buffett was out there at the very beginning saying, be greedy when the market is fearful and be fearful when the market is greedy. That is behavioral. And although that's much more in a broader market perspective, but what we've found is that there are pockets and there are points in time when emotions run high, whether, whether it's around news or key events, that cause people's emotions to get the better of them and cause a lot of these behavioral biases, which all of us have, to really rear up and cause us to make poor investment decisions. And essentially what we're doing is targeting those specific instances and developing strategies that are designed to exploit a mispriced asset. So is it as simple as being greedy when other people are being fearful and, and being fearful when other people are greedy? And like, you know, what, what would be some of the examples of, of strategies that we would exploit off of uh, investor behavior? Yeah, I mean, we really couldn't create a fund that would just wait until everybody got fearful <laughs> because we'd, be, we'd probably be sitting in cash for too much amount of the time and people probably wouldn't like that. Uh, but that's at the overall market level. What we found is actually at the underlying security level, there's many instances where people make emotional mistakes. And as an example, one of our strategy uh, one of our strategies works off consensus analyst recommendations. And you know, there's no question that the herd behavior where there's safety in numbers, we feel more safer if we're buying a company that most of the analysts on the street like. It's just, hey, everybody says buy, I feel safe. If they're wrong, then we're all gonna be wrong together. And that that is herd mentality. However, what we found is companies that actually have fewer buy recommendations tend to perform better. So we developed a strategy that looked for companies that went unloved by the analyst community for an extended period of time. And when they start to see some upgrades, very often they have this strong reversion to the mean and recovery period. And essentially that's one of our strategies that's targeting herd-like herd behavior around analyst recommendations. So what are some of the other examples of strategies that we might take advantage of? Like for example, we saw a couple months ago with the Facebook noise that we took advantage of a large part of the noise uh, around that name. Um, you know, underlying fundamentals of the company were strong still, but but there was a, a perception in the marketplace that really dropped the company's kind of stock price significantly. We were able to take advantage of that. but like. What are some of the strategies that would lead to that kind of decision making? Yeah, I mean, the, the Facebook's a prime example because we were we were buying when it's our emotional cascade strategy, where it's basically the the news becomes extremely lopsided and extremely one sided for an extended period of time, and everybody's running around with hashtag delete my account. And and the fact was is you know the emotions got the better of investors; they overreacted to the downside, and we're taking advantage of that in in that instance. But Another prime example on, I mean, mental accounting is a well-documented behavioral bias where, you know, people bucket where money comes from and how they earned it and and essentially attach a certain, a different amount of value to it, even though it's worth the same in different buckets. We've found a very profitable strategy in company spinoffs. Now, companies often spin off small divisions and distribute those to shareholders. And what we found is that when those distributions actually happen, shareholders will very often just blow out those positions. And the reason being is that 
it's such a small position. It's not going to make a difference in my portfolio. I never researched it to begin with, and I never paid for it. So people just blow them out. And what we found is these spinoffs see inordinate amount of selling pressure when they first hit the market, and usually goes on for a number of days or weeks, and then they start a, a gradual recovery as things stabilize and the volume subsides. So why is it important in a strategy like this to have multiple kind of ways to make money? Like, you know, it sounds like there's seven or eight different biases that we can exploit. Why is it so critical to use all of them in, in a strategy like this? Well, you know, a lot of the world, a lot of the investment community uses fundamental analysis, discounted cash flow. The quants use a lot of uh, factor harvesting and that type of thing, throwing a lot of data science at the solution of trying to make money in the markets. Uh, our approach is, and we use a lot of those tools as well, but it's a social science. The market changes, the behavior of the participants change. And we believe we've designed a number of strategies that work relatively independent amongst each other that target those misbehaviors or those behavioral biases. But we also realize that over time, some of these may fade out because the behavior of the people in the market will change and some of them could potentially stop working. So we use a number of different strategies because in some market environments, some will work and others, others will work. And we also continue to monitor them because we also realize at some point in time, some of these may stop working and we'll have to be developing new strategies along the way. So when you look at a fund like this, how would an investor allocate this to a portfolio? Like how do you use something like that is a behavioral exploiting type of investment strategy? Is it against just a long equity book that you would have elsewhere? Is it another investment long strategy? Is any other portfolio management uh, experience you'd have in equities? Yeah, I mean, our, our benchmark's North American equity, so it broadly fits in that bucket. But I would say that the, the strategies within it tend to be a little bit more on the alternative side. So we can short up to 20%. We do use some option strategies in there as well. So it's a bit of an alternative of light type strategy and but I would as far as an asset allocation perspective it fits in the North American equity bucket and I would view it as possibly you know one of the most active strategies out there trying to capture alpha from you know mispriced assets caused by people's behaviors. Behavioral finance is rising on the academic side for sure and we're seeing more and more publications more and more research reports and I think from a an evolutionary perspective it it really makes sense on a, for an active manager to not just focus on the underlying investment, how much is that worth, is it mispriced, is there an opportunity there, but also to start focusing on the behavior of the market participants. And I think that's what's often lost is, you know, the market, it's, it's a social network, it's a social relationship, and the behavior in that market changes quite often. So I think this is potentially one of the evolutions of active management to start focusing a little bit more on the actual participants and the impact they have in the market, and then trying to create uh, profitable trades from that perspective.